you have a uh, warp gate research almost done, not even being chrono boosted actually. Let's see how much. He's 67 extra. Uh, there goes Ophelot sneaking in with 645 extra now um, energy on the Nexus. Uh, should be chrono boosting that warp gate research as much as possible and even getting other, other gateways down. Uh, he is actually expanding, so you have the Nexus being thrown down. No four gate rush in this game, which is uh, a, a little, little, little thankful for that. We do see a ton of four gate. Yes, we, we certainly see plenty. And actually, Zergling Speed just finishing up a couple of Zerglings out on the field now. They took out that probe that was scouting, and it looks like maybe both players are going to fall back for now and uh, macker up a little bit. Two queens are up for the Zerg player, and would like to see him. He got a creep tumor down, so that's good. Needs to inject on his main hatchery there. He's got a lot of energy. There he goes. And he has a Roach Warren down, uh, probably a little early with that Roach Warren. As you can see now, he's actually not producing any Roaches. He has he's supply blocked, and he doesn't have enough gas. So Supply blocked and a ton of extra minerals. 600 extra minerals right now. A yeah, little bit of a miss. There goes the extra Overlord, finally. Uh, the Overlord in Protoss Space actually was killed, did not scout and see the new Nexus on the natural. Um, but having only seen two gateways and a, a ton of pylons, I, I think it's a fair assumption for him. Does make the transition a ton of probes. Actually, I think maybe too many probes. Eight probes over from the main to the to the natural. Might be too much of a transition. And look at this, just in time. Here comes a swarm of Zerglings now, and if they get in there, they might get a shot at some of these probes. He needs to move those Zerglings They're just in. hiding in the back. Yep. Yeah, oh my gosh, Trust does see them. Uh, you got like, Good force fields down, does block a few of the Zerglings. Other Zerglings will go up to the main. I think about six Zerglings did make it to the main. Those probes need to walk in a circle or try to get a surround. These probes are not moving all too well. It does get one, two probes, I think. And uh, I think Ish is going to be able to defend this rather handily. Good job getting those Zerglings up there, denying them. He block the ramp. He would be smart to block the ramp. Oh, he almost gets the ramp and get, does get two Zerglings. One Ling left, harassing the natural. I think it's going to take out one probe if he's not too careful. Does get the one probe, and he has to go surround it. Yeah, and actually... Uh... Imps a little lucky that Thul didn't send any more Zerglings up here because he actually just force fiddled himself into his own base. And if, if another swarm of Zerglings had come to the natural, he would have been in serious trouble. But as it was, he did a good job there dealing with those Zerglings. But the Zerg uh, did spot the Ribo facility and he did get in there and, and do a little bit of damage. But uh, good good hold there by Imps on that. But it was just only about eight or ten Zerglings. And now we see Thul maybe getting a little greedy. He's pumped out another batch of Zerglings and he's going to go ahead and try it again. But I, I think uh, Imps is going to be a little bit on edge and it will probably be ready for this. Yeah, I think definitely ready. I think he probably needs a few more blocks. Oh, he needs to block that ramp right now. Why did... Oh, there he goes. Ooh, so close. One Zergling does make it up, but that could have been absolutely horrifying if he... And the, the micro doesn't seem to be working for Thule. He's actually trying to send that Zergling back down the ramp. Those Zerglings need to harass the probe, that one Zergling. Um, and it's a great defense by Imsh blocking that ramp at the very last second. That was extremely close. I think he needs just to put a Zealot and leave it up there at that choke there like you yeah. typically open with because that's just... That's going to be a big worry as he is moving out across the map now, and he, he does need to be careful that more Zerglings don't try to swing around, although it looks like right now uh, Thul is transitioned back towards Roaches, and he's trying to um, bring Roaches out, but I think he may have uh, rolled the dice too much here with those Zerglings, as he's got a very small army. He's got a couple of spine crawlers and just some Roaches, but here comes a large force from Imsh, as well as a proxy pylon going down at the gold. Yeah, very good, actually, taking out two... Uh, two uh to which we'll call it... Uh, creep Tumors. Yeah, Creep Tumors, that's right. And actually, a good battle right now. Uh, force building, blocking off a couple roaches. Is still in range of the Spine Crawler. Takes out a queen. Three roaches, four roaches now in the back. And uh, these lots need to actually get around the force. They're actually blocking himself in. But his army is way too strong. 62. Actually, they're pretty pretty even on supply. 62, 61 right now. Um, Amish can win this just by blocking the ramp and taking out the Spine Crawler. He's going for that mineral line. He does have to pull those drones out. Uh, the defend, but uh, I think there are plenty of stalkers and sentries left to, to finish this. Oh, does not block the ramp, and another wave of roaches does come down the ramp. This actually might turn the tide, and Thule might be able to hold us off. Yeah, with those roaches focusing down the sentries, and now the roaches need to focus down each of those stalkers, and stalkers are on the run, but watch out, that proxy pylon's there. More stalkers have come out, and now uh, Thule needs to switch over to Zerglings here and pump out Zerglings to deal with these stalkers, as a larger number of stalkers is going to quickly whittle down those roaches, and without the spine crawlers and Already the drone's been sacrificed. Yeah, actually, right now it's like a 5-on-4, 5-on-2 uh, Roach, uh, roach uh, Stalker. But there are, there are a couple of lings coming out, one or two lings, and the Stalker's actually trying to focus down that hatchery. Not such a great idea. And more lots actually being warped right now off four gates. I think there actually, he has actually more than four gates. I don't know, I guess he does it just up before. And pumping out a, a mortal over in his robo facility. He had so many centuries and chose not to block off the ramp. That could have finished the game right there. But right now he's in a fight, uh, a little bit of a game of attrition. Uh, both players with plenty of minerals and gas. 
Absolutely. Now drones moving up, giving up that natural base. Uh, is Thule. He's got a ton of drones. He's actually got a bunch of idle drones in his mineral line and his main, too. Might have been a misclick there. And uh, some Zerglings are out, but, you know, with that proxy pylon there, I'm not sure that... If I miss something here, these zealots appear to be retreating. I'm not sure. Did I miss? This is a bad idea to retreat. Actually, especially, I think there's a little bit of a miss micro uh, or, or macro with the, uh, the nexus. There's so many energy, so much energy on both these nexus over on Imp's side. He needs to plop down two more gateways uh, and chrono boost those warp gates, and then just send a ton of units out. I think he wants to transition over to the Colossi and, and finish it off there. Yeah, and I, I think almost certainly he could have finished this game. Uh, Thule actually a little bit of latency there. Uh, could almost have finished that game off uh, right then and there. Easily, so it was... easily. With so so many two immortals, so many zealots. Um, all you need to do is spawn a couple of sentries over by his uh, proxy pylon, which is down right now. And now he's giving uh, Thule a little chance to come back with a uh, a third, uh, I guess, I guess a second hatchery actually right now over on nine o'clock position. Yeah, double expanding once again, and actually a, a fourth hatchery going down as a uh, in base hatchery as well. So. Three hatcheries in production right now for Thule, so his production's going to go crazy here in a few minutes. He is a little little lower on resources, um, and now here comes some Zerglings again, another run by. A little bit of a counterattack over on that back hallway. Gets into the probe line and takes out a ton of probes. Actually, a very good job by Thule actually retreating the Zerglings. Very good idea now that the Colossus is out in the field. The Zerglings will do nothing against the Colossus. I think... Uh, uh, another mistake over by Imp's side, he needs to get a forge down, needs to get a plus one uh, attack upgrade to make his zealots that much more effective against Lings. Uh, he is blocking off that back hallway right now with uh, two pylons. Um, this does need to do a little more scouting. I mean, he does have the Robo, and uh, it's on uh, it's probably on Colossus right now, but you do need an observer just wandering the map. I mean, he needs to spot that third hatchery. Yeah, Imp looks like he does have an observer right now, kind of just hanging over the army of Thule back at the natural um, at the Zurich base, but he still has not spotted... That third hatchery that's just finished, and now uh, Imp's actually taking the, the gold expansion of his own there. Yeah, this is a, a typical example of a player play, trying to play it very safe. Uh, Imp knows he's ahead, he's going to try to get more ahead, um, and it's just situational awareness, not knowing the uh, exactly where, how, how many bases and uh, the exact army composition of a uh, Thule. Um, even with that observer, he's, uh, he's just a little wary. Yeah, I, I think he could prepare to push in here once he gets one or two more Colossi out, which he is preparing to do. And now Forge going down to get some upgrades as well. Forge would have been useful earlier on to get some of these upgrades. We do see this Zerg player getting some um, Roach upgrades. He's got the Burrow. Actually, he hasn't researched Burrow yet, getting the Tunneling Claws for the Roach. Not sure that's going to be much use um, with Burrow not being researched. Perhaps he's just forgotten about it or is planning to get it soon. But we do have a thermal lance done over on the Protoss side, and if you look at the Protoss base, I mean, neither his base, I mean, his first base is way over uh, saturated. His natural is undersaturated. He actually finally transitioned over uh, some drone, uh, some probes to his uh, second gas. Um, he needs to uh, work on his macro. But once this gold base gets up, uh, it's a pretty much a sure thing. As long as he uh, he has a couple minutes with with the gold base uh, harvesting, he does have three claws on the field right now. He needs a couple more pylons over on his gold base, and he just needs scouting. I mean, at this point, if I was playing. As uh, Imps right now, my thoughts would be: How could Thule come back? What are the possible ways that Thule could beat me, um, knowing that he is so far ahead? And what I would think in my head is: One, transition over Muto possibly, um, uh, or spawning many secret bases. And uh, I don't think uh, Imps has that in mind, or otherwise he would be scouting uh, into the main, checking out what uh, what tech buildings, and also uh, moving over to these uh, hidden bases. Yeah, my, uh, that's a very good point about switching over to Mutas. There are a lot of stalkers right now, but not uh, about not, 15 not stalkers. Not too many, actually. And he, he doesn't have he does not have a, a Twilight Council. He doesn't have Blink. That would be the perfect counter. Um, I mean, harassment would be fantastic too. There's no cannons at any of the uh, mineral exactly. Blocks, so it'd be perfect. That four is just a, a little late. I mean, Thor has been doing a pretty good job with the harass to get a ton of probes or t ton of uh, probes over in the natural. And I mean, with this gold base up, it's just waiting a couple minutes. Once you get a ton of minerals, I mean, if you look at the resource counter, uh, 1,500 extra minerals over on Imch's side. He's stuck at 150. There it goes. 150, 150, 166 uh, supply right now. Uh, and he actually is moving in. He does see. He does find this expansion, and he will take it out pretty handily. And I think the game's going to pretty much end from here. Yeah, I'll cool. trying to counterattack here. Maybe try to snipe this gold base and just pull back, but he's going to walk right into this Colossus army, and it's probably going to be all she wrote. Oh, he does, the Roaches have burrowed, and he actually does not observe her there. The Roaches pop up right in the middle of the Colossus army, 
focusing down the cross, two low down, third one goes down, and uh, the fourth one will actually go down as well, spawning in a ton of stalkers from right now. It's actually a great move by Thor to take down all these stalkers. It actually does snipe the Nexus and running the roaches away right now. Wow, fantastic. A bit of micro from Thor there. Unfortunately, he did lose his third base as well, so he's only mining on uh, one base right now. It's his main. is almost mined out, but excellent job there, sniping all of those Colossus as well as the Nexus in that process, but now he's got a lot of stalkers to deal with. And, uh, I have to say, in this post-patch 1.3 world, uh, Infestors with Fungal Growth would be absolutely fantastic right now. Infestors do an additional 30% damage now to armored units, and this heavy number of Stalkers and Colossus would just take that much more damage from the improved Fungal Growth of the Infestor. Yeah, Zerg late game against Protoss, uh, definitely a little bit improved over in 1.3. Um, but you look at the army of Amish, it's just way too strong. Uh, 148 to 96, he can move him right now, he's on the creep. Uh, uh, Thorn knows he's there, and uh, these roaches are bur uh, burrowed, and uh, we, do, we do have uh, some Corruptors out, two Corruptors out to get the one Colossus. Two, two Immortals are going to help so much with this army, and uh, Lings aren't willing to do anything. There goes Observer uh, spotting all the burrowed units, and I think it's gonna, we're going to see GG real soon. Yeah, a nice burrow play, though. Again, he was able to burrow, and, and the whole army walked over top, but it was just the army size was just too big of a discrepancy there for the for that first duel, and uh, he really just had no choice there. But, uh, yeah, I think the issue was just, you know, no real counter to the Colossus and the Immortals that came out, as well as the heavy Stalker count. Roach is heavily countered by all of those units. Uh, the Immortal and the Stalkers both do great damage against them. And good game. Uh, from Thule to Imch, so Imch takes it, and Thule will go down to the loser's bracket to, uh, to fight an another day. So congratulations to both those players, and thanks to, thanks to them for uh, coming over from the Euro scene to play. And we'll try awesome, man. Going. Definitely a good game. Not your typical four-gate Protoss PPZ. No, that's, and that's fine by me. So let's see if we can get another game going, and then uh, we'll get right into it. And, uh, have you heard from? I think I saw uh, Brad Shoemaker get on earlier. I wasn't sure if you. I did. He's, he's, I saw him in the uh, the Giant Bomb chat channel, and I sent him a message, but he was marked as away, so he has not okay. actually responded yet. All right, so we'll pull up our little overlay, and we'll be right back, guys, with another game. So uh, yeah, Norm, they actually are going to be starting over with the ladder um, reset soon, and I think the Grandmaster League will be starting in just a couple weeks after that. Very nice. So your old ladder position, will you have to replay five placement matches? Um, they're going to have so, one placement match, as I understand it. They're going to keep your, I guess, your hidden rating, your matchmaking rating that's kind of been always underneath everything that's been kind of determining who you play. So that's yeah. gonna that placement match will still take that into account. So you'll probably play someone on your level during your placement match. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's just going to end up throwing you back into the same division where you were because it's just a one placement match. How much can they really get? It's just more right. to get you. It's more just to clear the ladders of all the inactive players, and then just to get you back into the system again. Well, that's fair. And they will, they will have a record of your old record and uh, yes. your, your one last record in your old ladder position uh, in case you do move. Right, and they have they introduced right in this patch like some little icons to to add on to indicate if you're in the top twenty five or top eight of your division. Just kind of oh, that's why my uh, my platinum looks a little different. Yeah, so just a little bit of extra incentive there. So that's why I'm battling for that eighth place position right now in my division because you get like a cool little star on your on your thing. And uh, right yeah, now, yeah, right now I'm ninth, so I'm like Wing, wings and a star underneath your icon. <laughs> yeah, so uh, something little, just a little extra. Um, um, treat the chase there on a stick, so uh, let's see, still no word. I think Harris is getting ready to play his match against someone shortly, so we'll get in there with him. Uh, yeah, and also, interestingly enough, on the ladders, they've actually taken out your loss record in they the did. game That's entirely, correct. which is... Yeah, which is so if you if you right-click on someone and check their profile right as the game's about to start, you only see how many wins in their division that they have. In their, yeah, in their Actually, you can't even find your losses anywhere in the game unless I've been mistaken. So it's it's a bit of an ingenious, oh, really? ingenious p play on Blizzard's part to encourage those players who are nervous of laddering to just say, hey, you know, uh, just keep on playing, and uh, no one's going to be able to see oh, how much wow. you lost. And you know, it's, that, it's that psychological factor of, oh, man, my loss count's just getting so high, but now it's just kind of like... Well, hey, you can check your math, match history and see how many you know, red numbers you see. True. You could you could do that, but that's... that's <laughs> but it, it, it's still very peculiar in a game so competitive that you actually cannot just have a have a number somewhere that says this is how many games I've won and how many I've lost. It's it seems very much done specifically to kind of encourage you to keep laddering, and you know it's kind of going to help me because that that could be a bit of a deterrent, I suppose. 
Um, yeah, so I mean, you use how many points you have, and uh, those those icon changes for the leagues are, are a big deal. I mean, if you right click someone's name, check their profile, and you see the wings and the star and the diamond, then you know you're going to be playing against it 